Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I like to talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today we're going to be talking about the Criterion flash sale that happened in the month of March 2022. Now, normally this happens in the month of February, but this year it happened to be in March, and actually this has happened in the past, so, you know, it kind of just alternates between uh, February and March, mostly in February, but this year happened to be in March. But regardless, I was able to get a few titles here, a few, more like a, a, a mini. I, I kind of went a little crazy, but I'm definitely going to be trying to save, uh, you know, a little bit more. So I wanted to do that, but I picked up a few titles that I had seen before and also a lot that I haven't seen before. And when I get to those ones, I'll let you know why I picked them up and when I kind of, uh, you know, want to be hopefully in that mindset to watch these films. But before we do that, I do want to know in the comment section down below, what were you able to pick up from this flash sale? I would love to know what you did end up getting. And if you weren't able to get into this flash sale, what would you be picking up? So with that being said, let's jump right into the flash sale haul. All right, first is a film from 1927. It is spine number 885, and it is directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It is The Lodger. A story of the L London Fog. I almost said that incorrectly. It's been a long day. Uh, but I watched this actually a few days ago when I f got the first wave of this, um, you know, this flash sale haul that came in the mail. And I really enjoyed this. This is the third film from Alfred Hitchcock, but it is, he, he likes to consider it his debut film or when he really kind of got the craft down a little bit better. And this is a great silent picture. Like I said, it's from 1927. It also comes with Downhill, which is another 1927 feature uh, from Alfred Hitchcock. Both of these films star uh, Ivor Novello, who is fantastic as the lodger in this film. But yeah, I, I this just reminded me of how much I love silent pictures and great movie. Highly recommend this one. Uh, and it, yeah, it's been on my uh, wish list for way too long of a time. And now I think I'm going to be watching some more Hitchcocks in the, in the near future. Next is a film from 1946, and it is spine number 939. It is a matter of life and death. This is a fantastic film. I watched it a few years ago, and this is directed by Michael Powell and em Emmerich Pressburger, and I love the Powell and Pressburger films. I've enjoyed every one of them that I've seen, and we're actually going to talk about another one in just a second, but this movie is just uh, phenomenal. Uh, it's got David Nivian in it and uh, Kim Hunter as our main characters, and uh, it's just such a gorgeous film. It, it kind of alternates between black and white, and color, but it is gorgeous. It is just a, a gorgeous picture, but nonetheless, it also really wonderfully acted, and there's a lot of heart attached to this film. But yes, A Matter of Life and Death, highly recommend this one. So I told you I wasn't done with Pal and Pressburger. Another one that I picked up was The Red Shoes on 4K. Now this is an upgrade from my previous Blu-ray copy from the Criterion Collection. This is spy number 44, and this is a 4K release now. So like I was saying, it's got an upgrade here. It's got a 4K UHD disc with uh, Dolby Vision HDR and also a digital master from the 2009 uh, uh, digital master restoration, which actually is uh, the same source that I think that they used in the original Blu-ray here too. But Pal and Pressburger's Red Shoes, I love this movie quite a bit. It's one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. Uh, the choreography, the, the music, uh, the acting, and the gorgeous colors uh, just really pop. It's a very memorable film and it's a very gorgeous and, and vibrant one as well. So Highly recommend all the Powell and Pressburger movies, honestly. I still have a few that I haven't seen on that shelf over there. So, you know, it's in due time. I need to start watching these ones. But I wanted to pick these ones up and definitely get this 4K upgrade. And speaking of 4K upgrade, I also picked up 1993's The Piano from Jane Campion. And this is spine number 1110, so it is a recent release and is just a phenomenal film. Holly Hunter, uh, Car Harvey Cartel, uh, Sam Neill's in it as well, and Anna Paquin. It's just got a really stunning cast and a really great director uh, and direction. And it is a crazy film uh, with a lot of twists and turns. And it's, it is hard subject material, I'm not going to lie. Um, but it is a gorgeous picture. And so is the gorgeous uh, front cover of this. So I was very happy that Criterion was finally able to put this movie out. And I have my old Blu-ray copy. And uh, I'm just glad that I was able to upgrade uh, this with so many special features with a new digital uh, 4k digital transfer here uh, from the DOP and the director uh, with new um, you know uh, Dolby Vision HDR as well so very excited about this one and a ton of other special features so another 4k I wanted to upgrade all right next are a few films that I haven't seen before and the first one I picked up was Scanners from David Cronenberg this is from 1981 and is spine number 712 this movie just looks crazy I really loved Crash and I talked about that not that long ago uh, I have my Arrow release of that, my Arrow video release. And, you know, I've seen The Fly, of course, and The History of Violence, and a few other 
Cronenberg films, and I really enjoy them. And I think since I watched Crash, I'm just like, I need to watch more Cronenberg. And Scanners was one that was missing in my collection. So very excited about this one. Uh, like I said, um, and here's a really cool digipack. And this is actually the only digipack that I picked up uh, from this sale. So yeah, Scanners, have you seen it? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, next is a film from a duo that is really legendary, Joel and Ethan Cohen. It's from 1990. I picked up Miller's Crossing, and this is spine number 1,112. Very excited about this film. This recently got released in the collection, and this is actually a movie uh, that I haven't seen before. It, there's a couple of Cohen Brother films that I haven't seen, Hutsucker Proxy being one, Miller's Crossing being another, and a few of their, I think, lesser known ones from like the early 2000s. Still haven't seen those either. But I wanted to pick up Miller's Crossing, and I had an old Blu-ray copy on my like unwatched Blu-rays over there, but I wanted to upgrade this one because I've actually heard quite a bit of my friends just ecstatic that it was in the collection, and it's got um, a lot of really cool extra, extra features here, uh, and it is a, a 2K digital restoration from the DOP and also the filmmakers, the, the brothers, the Coen brothers, and with a new 5.1 surround sound mix with uh, extra special features that are new uh, to this film. So might as well get uh, this one upgraded because I love the Coen brothers and I've heard really great things about Miller's Crossing. All right, next is a film that I've been hearing about all last year from 1992, which is a great year. It's when I was born. It is Deep Cover right here, uh, directed by Bill Duke. And I love Bill Duke and I've, I've enjoyed the things that I've seen him uh, in and also direct. And this is spine number 1086. And that's such a gorgeous cover. I love that purple uh, and black and blue right there. But uh, very excited about this movie. I don't know necessarily too much about it, but it's the 1990s Los Angeles uh, and is starring Jeff Goldblum as well. Uh, and is got a lot of really fantastic things in here. Dr. Dre's solo single deep cover uh, is in this as well. So it, it just, it looks fun. It looks great. And I've heard a lot of really good things uh, from a lot of people. It's got a 4K digital restoration uh, and a lot of uh, extra features attached to it as well. So I'm very excited about Deep Cover. Let me know if you've seen this one. All right, moving right along from 1998, I actually picked up The Celebration, uh, Dog Me One. Uh, this is from Thomas Vinterberg, and I've enjoyed a lot of his films so far. This is spine number 1008. Well, this is spine number 1108. I messed up. And yeah, this is uh, a crazy film. I've heard a little bit about the Danish Dog Me 95 movement, but I really don't know much about it. And uh, I'm definitely curious to read more of the, the supplementary things going around it. And, uh, you know, this is a very interesting cover, right? It's one that, you know, has uh, you know, that translucent, you can see the discs in here. It kind of reminds me of an old video store, right? And uh, yeah, it just kind of gives you this, this pamphlet. I think that was originally released with the Dog Me 95. Uh, material uh, or what, what what was going on about it, the, the event. So very excited about this one. Don't know much about it, which I think is going to be an interesting time. Uh, but yes, let me know how much you know about this film down in the comment section down below. All right, moving right along is another film from 1992 directed by Robert Altman, who I did a deep dive a few years ago. I picked up The Player right here with Tim Robbins and Greta Sakachi. I probably said her name incorrectly. Fred Ward, Whoopi Goldberg, and Peter Gallagher is in this film. I've enjoyed everything I've seen from Robert Altman, from uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller to MASH and a few other films that I just am blanking on, Gosford Park, right? Uh, but very excited about this one. This one's been on and off my Criterion wish list for a long time, and I, I'm glad that I finally picked it up. So The Player, let me know if you've seen this one in the comment section down below. All right, next is a film that actually was introduced by me from my good friend Elliot Cohen when we did a Criterion roundtable with our friends Sam and Chris, film blogger Sam and Chris Moen. Please check that out in the description down below. Uh, great video on Sam's channel, and we had a really good time. So we talked about Criterion's. Uh, some we all introduced uh, a film that we would like to see in the collection. We also talked about films that we would recommend to people in the collection, and we had a really great conversation. But one of the films that was brought up was Ashes and Diamonds, and this is a Polish film. This is from 1958. It is spine number 285, and is from Andrzej uh, Wadsha. I probably said that incorrectly, it's, my Polish is not great, uh, but it looks like a film about World War II um, and uh, about anti-communism, the resistance movement. So very excited about this one. Like I said, it's an early release, but I think this was only on DVD, so now this has recently been uh, upgraded to Blu-ray. So excited about this one and also learning more about Polish cinema. All right, the next two films actually were, came to me by means of my good friend Steph Movie Chatter. She recommended the, to, these to me in a lot of her videos, and so I was definitely excited to pick these ones up. First and foremost is from 1986. It is Betty Blue, and this one is spine number 1002. 
I love that cover so much. I don't really know much about it. It's a French film. It is 186, 85 minutes, so it's three hours plus. Um, and uh, yeah, it just looks like a really fun film uh, about, um, I guess, Betty Blue. And uh, is, Betty is played by Patrice Dali and uh, meets Zorg, a novelist, and kind of just has a, a spiral of a romance, I think. Uh, don't really know much about it, like I said, just really excited about this one and uh, heard really great things about it. And like I said, this is the other film that was uh, prompted from my good friend Steph. It is Pariah from D. Rees, and this is spy number 1083. And D. Rees uh, is actually, I think, the first uh, black queer woman uh, from in the collection and as a director, and I'm very excited about this one. Uh, for numerous, numerous reasons, but uh, just really hearing what Steph had to say about this uh, and really kind of just uh, exposing me to a film that I had really no idea about and uh, really just very curious to go down this rabbit hole and learn more about this. But this is a recent release from 2011, not too long ago. I mean, I guess 10 years plus. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's 86 minutes. It's got a 2K digital transfer. Uh, it's got the, deal, uh, the, the director and uh, the, a professor doing a new conversation here, uh, and just a lot of other uh, additions here attached to it, but really kind of just showing, uh, showcasing vulnerability and liberation right here. So very excited about uh, Pariah, but I would love to know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. All right, next one is a wild film that I haven't seen, but I remember seeing this in my former roommate's uh, collection all the time, and he told me it was a crazy movie, but it's from 1970, it is Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, a Russ Meyer production. But also, uh, Roger Ebert, I think, wrote this film. Uh, and I actually recently watched uh, his documentary, Life Itself. Uh, really, really enjoyed that, too. Uh, so it was kind of crazy how this correlated with that, even though I had or put in my order and uh, did not uh, realize that was the case. And so, anyway, very excited about this movie. I've heard it's just nuts. It's a lot of different genres. It's, like, pornographic in some in some instances, but also a comedy, like a shoot 'em up film, exploitation film. It's all these different things kind of mashed up together, but I really don't know much about it. But it uh, looks like a fun time. I know it's not going to be a good movie, but I'm going to have a fun time, and I'm going to watch it with some friends. So Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, how to pick it up. And last of these single releases before I jump into the box sets is a film called Dragon Inn from King Who, and this is from 1967, spine number 937. Very excited about this movie. Uh, I've been, this is another film that was on and off my list for quite some time. Uh, it didn't come out that long ago, but I do remember wanting to pick this one up quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm very interested a little bit more into the Kung Fu films uh, from this time period and it gonna, it gonna explore that more in the summer, I think. Uh, so I wanted to pick this one up and I just, I think it's just gorgeous. I, I know it's, uh, it's a really, really important film. I've heard really good things from a lot of my friends. So it's got a 4K digital restoration um, and a, a, a few uh, interviews with actors, uh, I think, who may have been in, the, in, the, in this film itself, but also people maybe who were uh, affected by this or at least uh, were influenced by it in some way. So very excited about Dragon Inn. Let me know if you've seen it. All right, the last two are box sets, and I was able to actually get these two practically for free because I actually had two $50 gift certificates from Criterion. When you spend enough, you start getting those, right? You start adding them up. And the first box set I wanted to get was, they came out last year, was the Mel, uh, Melvin Van Peebles Essential Films right here. It's got four films in it. I think it has a few more in the uh, extra features, but Don't Play Us Cheap, Sweet, Sweet Backs, Badass Song, Watermelon Man, and The Story of a Three Days Pass. So spy numbers 1,093 all the way up to 1,096. So very excited about this one. I love um, uh, the, the art design of this. And uh, I've heard actually really good things about this. And I haven't really looked too much uh, uh, about uh, all of these different types of films here. But it looks like um, from this filmmaker, there's all different types of things going on here. Uh, and all different types of formats and genres that he's playing with. So, And it looks like it's got a ton of special features. So I'm very curious about this box set. and very happy to pick it up. And yes, I have a lot of box sets that I haven't seen yet, but that's what the journey is all about, right? And last but not least is actually the, the film that came yesterday it is one that's still in a shrink wrap because I was waiting to get this film before I shot this, but I was able to pick up this Martin Scorsese uh, World Cinema Project Volume 3. I have the first two volumes and I've seen the first volume and I really, really enjoyed it. And I still have not seen the second volume yet, but I'm waiting for a good time to do it. But I wanted to pick up the third one because I really love that this uh, this thing exists first and foremost because it's really showcasing a lot of countries that, you know, don't really get enough spotlight. 
and I uh, will show you uh, what these films are and tell you where they're from and when they came out. Uh, Lucia Cuba, uh, came from Cuba from 1968. There is After the Curfew that came in, from Indonesia from 1954. We have Peyote from Brazil from 1980. Uh, das uh, Mahones from Mexico from 1934. Uh, Soldio, I think that's how you say that. Uh, Mar Maritana from 1970, and Downpour from Iran from 1972. Now, I've seen quite a few films from uh, some of these countries, uh, you know, Iran and uh, a couple from Brazil, but I, I haven't really seen much from the other other films, uh, other other locations, right, other countries. And that's just something I really love about this, this project, like I was saying. So very curious to jump into this one, and I know there's a, a, quite a few films that are really, really important and essential, uh, to kind of showcasing, you know, world cinema in general. So those are the films that I picked up for this March 2022 flash sale. I picked up quite a bit, but I, like I said, I hope to kind of cut back on this one a little bit. And I honestly don't think I'm going to spend too much in July as uh, I try uh, my best not to do that. But I'm very curious to know what you picked up during this sale. So let me know in the comment section. But I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I love hearing uh, from you and seeing the comments uh, down in the comment section and interacting with all of you. So give it a like, share, hit the notification bell, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm not Jones and around.